Imagine you were stuck in the middle of a large, dark tunnel and you couldn't see the light at the end of it. What would be the best way to proceed? Stay tuned and find out. Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel on this gray day in November in Portland, Oregon, where each week we talk about practical skills and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is, What do you do when you can't see the end of the tunnel? But before we start, I have to uh, tell a joke. And by the way, I appreciate all you live chatters. Some of you are listening here. Every Sunday we go on the air and engage in a virtual support group. And people know that I like jokes, and so they've been flooding me with them, and I've been writing them down. And every now and then I Use one. This was a great one from somebody in Cincinnati or whatever. Okay. Well, you know, I've been married for a long time and I do, I'm kind of a, you know, strange person. So when my wife told me to stop acting like a flamingo, I had to put my foot down. <laughs> All right. Well, as I said, the uh, title of today's video is What Do You Do When You're uh, Stuck in the Middle of a Tunnel and Can't See the Light? And uh, this came to me when I was doing one of my favorite activities, riding up Rocky Butte. <clears throat> Way back in 2014, I made a video about uh, how exercise is a wonderful thing for people with depression. And my two videographers, Jerry and Joshan, actually filmed me riding up and down Rocky Butte, which is an extinct volcano in Northeast Portland. I go there about once a week when I'm feeling blue. By the time I get up to the top, not only am I exhausted, am I breathing, ha, 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 but my mind clears, the fog lifts, and I actually feel like a normal human being. The problem, however, is getting down. And um, what I did on this particular day is I had to go through a tunnel. Well, there's two ways to get down, the back side, the front side. The guy I was riding with said, we want to go down the front side. I say, no, I, this is a winding tunnel. I get disoriented in the dark. I'm afraid I'm going to fall off and get run over. Please, please, please. He said, nope, we're going down this way. So I said, okay, under one condition. You go slow enough, slowly enough, so I can see your taillight and I can fall out as a way to get out. Fair enough, he said. So we went down, down, down. We got to the tunnel and he slowed down and I started to follow his light, but then he started to speed up. I said, wait, wait, Thelonious, please slow down. I can't see. And at that moment, the end of the tunnel appeared. I could see the daylight and I said, okay, don't worry. Keep on going. I, I now can find my way out. And as I was emerging from the tunnel, safe and sound, I thought to myself, well, isn't this a metaphor for depression? I mean, what about people who are really depressed like I used to be? You're stuck in the middle of the tunnel. You've lost, you could say you, you're lost in the tunnel of depression. And as far as you can see, it's just black. What do you do then? This is exactly what occurred with me when I was in the middle of a really bad depressive episode that I write about in my book, When Going Through Hell, Don't Stop, A Survivor's Guide for Overcoming Anxiety and Clinical Depression. And if I give this whole title of the book, it's because it's the thing I'm most proud of. You can see it on the screen, and hopefully you'll order the ebook because the print book is out of print. Anyway, here I was in this disparity. I went to my counselor, and he said, Well, Douglas, I guess you just have to have the faith that at one point things will get better. Well, that was of no help because when a person is in deep depression, uh, it's impossible to, to hold a positive thought for any period of time. So just telling me to you know, hang in there was not enough at that point. So, what did I do in this situation? What can other people do? Well, the first thing to realize is that when you cannot hold uh, any faith for your, your, your future, uh, other people can. They can hold what I call a feel of hope. They can believe for you what you can't believe for yourself. This is what a wonderful minister at the Living Enrichment Center named Michael Moran did for me, is he believed in my healing and he held a feel for my healing when I could not do so by myself. So, you can have someone else do this for you. It could be a family member, a friend, uh, someone in your spiritual community, a psychologist, your therapist, your shrink, you know. And anybody who you can, you can get, maybe it could be a sponsor or somebody from AA or any support group you're in. And uh, what I have found is that holding this field of hope is even stronger, is even more powerful when it's done in community. This is what I learned in my 18 years of running depression support groups, the power of the group field. And this is eventually how I was healed uh, from that depression in 96, 97, when a group of people at the spiritual center came together and held a field 
for my healing collectively. And sure enough, I eventually did get better. But what if you don't know anybody who can hold that faith for you? I mean, for myself, who's been very fortunate to be blessed with friends and companions, that seems, you know, inconceivable. But many people, especially who write me from this very channel, many of you listeners who make comments are alone. They have no family. Uh, they've been isolated from friends. They've retreated. And there really is no one. And if you're in that situation, I have a resource for you that I think will really be helpful. It's called Silent Unity. It's a 24-hour prayer ministry. Uh, operates out of the Midwest. And uh, I got a, an, a, a comment the other day from someone said, I've been praying, but it hasn't been doing any good. I've been going to church. Well, this is a very special type of ministry. Uh, it's been going since 1889. The people who run it hold a really high consciousness. And when you call, they will get on the phone with you, the prayer associate. They'll do a beautiful affirmative prayer, seeing you as whole and well, even before it happens. They'll leave you with an affirmation. And then they'll send you a letter of support and they'll keep you in their prayer chapel for 30 days. How do you access this beautiful resource, which is free? You simply call a toll-free number that will appear on your screen. It's actually not toll-free because it only works in the United States. Here's a number you can call from any place in the world, 1-816-969-2000. In addition, you can also call your local crisis line. They were... Uh, Salvation for Me, the Multnomah County Crisis Line here in Portland, and there's also the National Suicide Prevention Helpline, which is open 24-7. That's 800-273-TALK-TALK. So there are people you can get on the phone. There's also depressive uh, depression uh, chat rooms. And of course, there's always my little live chat every Sunday, 12 noon. People call from all around the world, uh, South America, Middle East, Lots of people in the UK, and we all get together and, and support each other. So fortunately, in this day of the Internet and of uh, toll-free calling and um, all these, you know, this mental health awareness, there are resources you can, you can tap into. Here's a second resource I'd like to give you if you're in this state of despair. Okay, so let's imagine you're in this dark, winding tunnel as I was. Just because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel now doesn't mean you won't see it when you come around the next bend or the next curve. Now think of this, you know, I do a lot of driving and I used to drive around the country, across the country, and, and these two-lane country roads, there's a solid yellow line right down the middle. Why is that the case? Because uh, when you're on a curvy road, you don't want to pass uh, when you don't have visibility up ahead because you can go around the curve and another you know, car can come right into you. Well, it's the same way with depression. Now, in this particular case, going around trying to pass a slow car on a windy road, the thing that comes to you, the crash, that's a negative thing. But it also can be positive. There can be an unexpected good uh, that you couldn't imagine that you can see around that corner. So the idea is expect the unexpected and be open to reality that something beneficial might happen because sometimes it does. One of my favorite songs is a song originally written by Pete Seeger but made famous by the birds in the 1960s called Turn, Turn, Turn. And those of you who have heard of it or have heard it, they remember, of course, the, 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 the chorus, uh, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So right now you might be in a season of darkness. You might be in a season of despair. But just as uh, spring falls winter, your season of darkness will turn into a season of light. So the key is keep moving forward the best you can. Keep slogging ahead. You know, the 23rd Psalm says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. The key word is through. David is walking through that valley. He is not pitching a tent there. He's not renting a condo there. He's not buying a home there. He is walking through to the other side. So if you keep moving through, if you keep slogging ahead, you will find relief. And this is why uh, Winston Churchill, who actually battled depression. By the way, who says depressives can't make great leaders? Look at Abraham Lincoln, right? Save the Union. Uh, Winston Churchill saved Western civilization. Anyway, he battled depression, and he said, when going through hell, keep going. I thought that was so clever, I decided to adopt it to my own title, when going through hell, don't stop. And I still say that to myself when I'm having a bad day. This has been Douglas Block. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it gave you some hope. And boy, we need hope in these times. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a like. And... Uh, be sure to leave your comments in the comments section. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments section or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, uh, simply click on my photo in the closing credits and you will be taken to the subscribe page. 
If you click on the bell up to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a video or a live chat. And if you want to become a supporter of this channel, simply click on the Patreon link. You'll be taken to a crowdfunding page where you can make monthly contributions and help us to keep moving forward. And uh, so until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery and keep moving through whatever you go through. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much.